what I want to talk to you about is how we can close the gap between spiritual understanding and spiritual implementation. There's a gap between spiritual understanding and spiritual implementation. Now, if you hear that, there's a gap there. And I want to close the gap because uh, in my uh, journey of serving God and wanting God and looking towards God in all my life that I've been able to, uh, that has been a glaring uh, glitch. That has been a glaring gap. That has been a real obvious to me. Uh, and how many places and times in Scripture talks about it is amazing. But uh, as we go through this, uh, I, I, I want you to try to help with, come with me and help understand, uh, help yourself to understand by by really focusing in on the gap factor between the spiritual understanding and spiritual implementation. And uh, what that means to me is, is that there's a lot of things that if you ask the average Christian, they'll say, yeah, yeah, and they talk to you about it as though it's theirs, as though they are living it, as though they are really, really a part of it. And then when you really bore down on it and mine it a little bit, dig it a little bit, you begin to discover that it's easy in our culture today to say I am when we're not. Hello? And, and um, I was talking with somebody uh, a couple of days ago, and I was talking to them about somebody that, that you know, they, they work with, and uh, I said, you know, that... Sometimes they were asking me questions about it. And I said, sometimes people, when they don't understand, we find out a lot of times when we go overseas, uh, they'll say, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm, I understand. Right. Mm -hmm, I understand. And when you really go back to it and say, did you understand what I said? No. They didn't have a clue. But I, I, I want you to try to, to understand that point, is that how easy it is to fall into the trap of, of going along in the process of having understanding. And sometimes we do have spiritual understanding. But I know for me, I made that my prayer when I first got saved. When I first got saved, I said to the Lord, God, don't show me something if I can't do it. And I was a brand new baby. I mean, I don't think I was two weeks old. In the Lord and I said to the Lord clear as I could say it in prayer and I've never forgot it I said Lord don't show me something that I can't do because for me uh, I, I, I in everything that I do even the art that I like is not abstract and and all that I don't care to, that kind of art you know art that's just some kind of blob and a couple of other blobs and then some blobs that are supposed to mean what the blob means <laughs> Uh, I just look at it and go, that's nah, not me because I'm not in the blob. And uh, there was a movie out when I was growing up called The Blob. And uh, I'm not into the blob, uh, but I'm into what's factual, what, what has its bearings in truth over here. And in, in so many of the things that I personally, part of my life, uh, I've grown up with that as being a, a mainstay in my life um, as a person who hunted all my life uh, there was no gray in that you had to uh, you had to have a lot of things that were actual you had to uh, you couldn't talk about it you had to begin to understand that you'd go hungry if you talked about it and then I we experienced that with fishing and other outside things that my dad taught me to do. And um, I talked very little about catching fish and talked a lot about the fish I caught. And, uh, and then in the same thing, uh, when I was in the water surfing uh, a large part of my life, uh, I found myself again in a situation where... Uh, there was a re reference made to people that were kooks. And people that were called kooks were people that had a surfboard, probably a brand new surfboard, 
and they had all the clothes and the wax and everything, and yet they could not stand up. And we saw them. They would come to Puerto Rico where we lived, and uh, they would uh, come and have the brand-new surfboard, get out of the taxi cab from New Jersey. We'd sit on the beach and would watch them wax it up, man, and they'd jump in the water, and uh, the first wave that'd be 10 foot high or 15 foot high would break their board in half and throw them on the beach like a, a wet towel, and they would... Uh, have sniffles and they would get their stuff and get in the taxi and go home and I'll uh, never forget the kid that one day and Corley and I were on the beach and the guy came and he got his board and had brand new swim trunks and and uh, we, we were uh, we were of a different mindset because we were the ones that uh, we run we ruled that spot and uh, we were the ones that were good and we were the ones that uh, we didn't have the store-bought anything we took candles and made our own wax and and uh, we had trunks that she made and uh, we were just a different breed and we sat there and watched this boy came he was from New Jersey came and and we watched him and he got his board all waxed took it out of the bag and waxed it and he jumped in the water but in the places where we surfed you couldn't go um, you didn't get in deep water till you got off the reef and the reef was looked like it was about um, this deep, you know, when it was this deep, or was like this deep when it was about this deep. And he dove in with his board, and his tail of his board hit the reef, snapped it right off, took the whole back of the surfboard off, and he was just paddling. And without his fins on there, which you don't know about, but anyway, the things that are his rudders, that kept him from going anywhere, and we just, we just laid on the beach and just cried laughing. And he turned around and walked back in, and he was only in water about this deep, and he walked back in, got his surfboard, and he got all these little urchins stuck in his feet, and he was disgusted, and he went home. And, uh, and we would call, we'd call them kooks. And uh, they were people who played the game. And the same thing happened in my drug world. And you'll understand all this. And uh, my drug world, there were guys that, uh, in the drinking world, the drug world, that uh, they used to call them skin poppers, and they were guys that faked it. They were guys that played the game and played around with it and never really got high and then didn't, didn't know what that was. And they would drink, you know, they'd take and drink like two beers and then act like they were drunk. We'd drink a case and a case and look for another, you know. And it was just a different mindset. Are you, are you following me? Now, that's in the world. And, and uh, you know, when I got saved... I, I came into this thing with some lack of understanding, of course, and I saw that there was people that were really spiritual, and boy, I was mesmerized at their spirituality and their ability to look like they were really spiritual, and their ability to uh, speak on spiritual things was tremendous. I mean, they could quote more scriptures than, uh, than you can imagine. There's a lady that uh, she's helping us write our book and she tonight was talking to Corley about this lady that we knew and we use her name in the book and uh, these were people that were really spiritual I mean they they could quote scripture and we would go wow and falsely we equated the fact that their ability to quote scripture their ability to show up in church meant they were spiritual And they weren't because there was no demonstration. Are you hearing me? They, they talked about it. They talked all the time about it, but they didn't have any demonstration. And then I began to ask questions because that's who I've, I've always been. I began to say stuff like, um, have you ever seen anybody healed? I meant that sincerely. You ever pray for somebody and see them healed? And then they would quote a meeting they were in. And I would go, oh. And I kind of still was baffled. Uh, baffled. I said, yeah, well, okay, they were in a meeting and somebody would get healed. But that wasn't what my question was. And I'm just a punk. I don't know what I'm doing. So I didn't press it. I mean, I'm not going to ask again, you know. And then I got a little older in God. And I started getting a little more bolder in God. And I began to get a little more ticked off that they were playing games. And I said, well, when you have you ever prayed for somebody you no 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 you well not really well then I began to really go on a search and I said God help us you're awfully quiet tonight I don't even I don't mean to be in your living room but I just feel like 
this is where the Lord led me. I'm going to actually preach something about it Sunday. I'm forewarning you so those of you that are afraid of the word won't come. But you need to hear this. Because the worst thing could be is, is that you go through your whole life and miss these glorious moments, number one. And number two, go through your whole life and realize you didn't have the real thing. Hello? See, this woman that Haja was talking to uh, from Quebec, Canada, she said to Haja, she said, uh, you guys believe in miracles? Yeah. She said, we are, we're there and we're studying with these, these educated minds, these very successful business people, and they're asking those kind of questions. Do people get healed? Do people get delivered? And she said, we need that understanding and teaching so that we can embrace that and walk in that power. How do you hear that? You see, you'd want that if it was your child dying. See, if your child was dying, you'd want what I'm preaching tonight. You'd be going, okay, okay, let me get right here. Let me get straight here. How, how does it work? What do I do? But as long as you run into a crisis of that nature, the enemy will disguise himself in so many ways and let you think you're there. Now, God is ready to perform his word. That's the first word I'm going to give you tonight. God is ready to perform his word. So somebody said one time, God's the best chess player in the world. It's always your move. Hello. And, and so that's really important that you, that you look at that. God is ready at all times to perform his word. Come with me now. You're going to get something. When God is ready to move, it means he is watching, he is waking, he is hastening, he is anticipating the perfect time. That's what the word perform, you can look it up, has a lot of those words around it. So when God is ready, when he's ready to perform his word, notice that, his word, it means he's watching He's waking, he's waking up, he's awakening others, he's awakening, uh, he's hastening, hello, and he's anticipating the perfect time to align with his saints in the earth and release his will to be manifested in our midst. That's a, that's a good statement. I'm going to say it again, I liked it so much. Now, when God is ready to move, it means he is watching, waking, hastening, anticipating the perfect time to align with his saints in the earth. Now, that means he's going to align with us. If we're not ready, we're holding him back. It even says that Jesus is being held back. Acts says he's being held back right now. He can't come. I'll be here. And, it's, and, and it's, it's important to align it with his saints in the earth and to release his will to be manifested in our midst. So God is ready to move. Can you get that? God's ready to move. It's you. It's me. We have to decide to move into some alignment with his readiness so that we can see his manifestation in the right time, in this place we live. Come on. To be ready means this. That he is sleepless. Alert. You know, the scripture says, he, 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 he you know, never slumbers, right? And he never sleeps nor slumbers. So that word ready means he is sleepless, alert, vigilant, and vigilant, and on the outlook to cause the supernatural door of heaven to be open and to pour out his will on the earth. That means he's ready. He's alert. He's vigilant. He's sleepless. He's looking out. Now think about this. Where are we at? What's going on? God's ready to perform his will. What are we doing? We have God on hold. Hello. 
We have God on hold. We have God uh, in, in the holding mode because God is waiting for us to get ready. Hello? To be alert. How would you like God to show up? And, and I believe, and I'm going to say this in a few times, I believe that there are, there are seasons, and I believe there's times where God does things. And, and there's lots of illustration to that. And I believe that this church has built itself around those opportune moments of God moving. There have been opportune moments that God moved and we were in the right spot, the right place, with the right heart at the right time and he did something. And we are constantly moving from that moment, from one moment to the next moment to the next moment in the life of walking with God. We're always at that moment of getting ourselves ready for the next thing that God wants to do. That's why our church has such a good biblical pattern because we go through a play like we did last Sunday and then we prepare ourselves for teaching. So we go to a play where we pour out and then we come to another meeting where we take in. And so God is helping us get that good balance. We pour out, we take in. Are you hearing me? And, and so that word there, ready, means sleepless, alert, vigilant, and on the lookout to cause the supernatural door of heaven to be opened to pour out his will on the earth. Now the next thing I want to say is, let's go to the word perform. The word perform, remember I said God is ready to perform his word. It means to stir up, strengthen, succeed, accomplish, advance, and appoint. See, that word perform means God wants to stir up. He wants to strengthen you. The word performance means to be strengthened. And we say, Lord, strengthen me in my faith. And then that word also means to succeed. Hello? Hello? It means that God wants to cause you to be blessed and be in health, even as your soul is blessed, right? So he's wanting for you to succeed. He wants for accomplishments. God wants you to be fruitful and to accomplish his will and to accomplish those things that you know is his purpose, right? And then to advance. God's word that he wants to perform is to cause you to advance. When you're not advancing, you're retreating. Man, is that going on today? Wow, people are retreating, people are backing out of, people are dropping, people are dropping things and backing out of stuff because it is the time of decision across the world. Hello. And, and it, the, the Bible says in the last days, the very elite would be deceived if it were possible. So the very ones that seem to be the spiritual ones, remember now we're looking at two different things here. We're talking about the gap between spiritual understanding and spiritual implementation. The difference between understanding something and implementing something. In the secular world, the word is execution. You can use that. I have books I've read over that for the years, and I love it, because a lot of people have goals, and they can tell you all their management skills, goals, and purposes, and all of the things that need to be applied and working out and all that. And then uh, they can tell you vision, and they can tell you about everything that's around it, but they can't execute what the simple task is to make what you said that was going to happen even happen. So that's why businesses fail at such an alarming rate. Hello? And that's why businesses stay in, in limbo or they stay in a half-bakedness or they stay in uh, an almost land. How are you here? People start businesses and they and, and you talk to them two or three years later and they got nothing else. They got the same business they started with. That, don't mean, that means something. That means to me that you, you're, you're not going to go anywhere. 
and, and because anything that, that's supposed to be a performance, hello, I mean that word performance is used a lot in the secular world. It has to do with you advancing. And it also has to do with an appointment or a point. The word there, performance, is an appointment for you to be able to be in the right spot at the right time to do what God's called you to do. Appointment. You've been appointed to that. How many of you here? Now, this is going to take me time for you to get this. So I'm going to take the time and, and uh, put it out there. And so... Uh, we'll do it next Thursday night, and we'll keep doing it the next Thursday night, and we'll keep doing it and just until we feel like we got it across. Are you hearing me tonight? All right, now, here's another definition for that word performance, or to perform. To perform. To perform means he will release industrious ability within us so that we, uh, so that as we journey on the path he has given us, and sacrifice before him, we will feel his presence and his power. That word perform means he will release industrious ability. That means creative genius. That means creative uh, ideas, witty inventions. He'll release them in us so that that industrious ability within us, the creative part in us, so that we, as we journey on the path that God has us, that he's given us and sacrifice on that path, you know, before him, we will feel his presence and his power because of that. 